Shalom, shalom to the 12 tribes that are scattered. I want to talk about the Holy Spirit today. The Holy Spirit. That's how it's referred to in the uh, Christian faith. But in the Hebrew, it is the Ruach. Or the Ruach HaKodesh. Meaning the set apart spirit. Or set apart breath. It consists of three letters it is the resh the wa and the het the, it is a picture of a head a man's head a picture of a nail or tent peg and last it is a picture of a fence so it's a picture of a man's head a picture of a nail and a picture of a fence it basically, when you look at it, it means a man who is secure or faithful and set apart. Or woman for that case. A woman or man who is faithful and set apart. That means that you, if indeed, are spirit-filled, you are a person who is faithful and set apart. But what does it really mean? That is very general. Let's dig a little bit deeper. What does the Holy Spirit really mean from a Hebrew, ancient Hebrew perspective? It basically means down to this. It is a prescribed path. The Holy Spirit or the Ruach HaKodesh means a prescribed path. Let me illustrate this. In the ancient Hebrew culture, the ancient Hebrew men or women had a routine. Those who have lived out in the country know what I mean. You get up out of your bed and your day starts off with a routine. Most people in those days or people who come from the country will get up and feed livestock. They'll feed them. Then they'll water their livestock. And there and then throughout the course of the day, they will be caring for their livestock. And you know that when you follow a specific routine, whether it's caring for livestock or doing your job or taking care of your children, if you follow a prescribed path, a prescribed routine, you will notice that you will have order in your life. You will eliminate chaos and have pretty much peace within your your day or routine so the idea of the Holy Spirit means that God has given you the Holy Spirit so that you too can have peace in this world you too can have order in this world how by following the Father's prescribed commandments and teachings meaning if the Father has written something in his word and if we obey it we are following his prescribed routine or prescribed path. You, in essence, are walking in the Spirit. Does that make any sense? Or does that make sense to you? When we allow the Father's Spirit or his breath to indwell in our bodies, if we're truly Spirit-filled, we will follow a prescribed path based on the commandments of our Father. The breath will compel us to walk in a prescribed path by following His commandments, His dietary laws, and His feast days, and eliminating pagan or idolatry from our lives, meaning we are set apart. Remember what I told you, it's a man or a person who's faithful to Yah who's set apart, meaning we cannot do worldly activities. We cannot celebrate uh, pagan holidays. We can't just eat everything. We have to follow those things the Most High said we should eat. So that is good for our health. It's good for our bodies, our spirits. So let me illustrate another point. Let me get right to it. So let me show you what this prescribed path looks like. So when the Most High created the world, He created the sun, moon, and stars. And they follow a prescribed path meaning they never crash into each other, they don't fall out of the sky. The sea currents, when the Most High created the oceans, He made sea currents, and the sea currents follow a prescribed path. 
They never deviate. They're pretty predictable. Um, the wind. We have wind patterns that go all around the world. And they too are pretty predictable. They follow a prescribed path. But man also, in spite of his rebellion, he too follows a prescribed path. Every time every human being inhales and exhales, he is following a prescribed path. He needs to breathe in and breathe out in order to survive. So that is an illustration of what the Most High has made as a prescribed path so that things can work and function the way He created them. So when the Spirit comes into your life and you allow the Spirit to have possession of your heart, you should be walking according to the manual, according to the instructions that are in His book. You can't just say, I don't want to do this, but I, I'll do this. Or do a little bit of that and not some of this. It has to be according to the instructions, the manual. All right. So now what do we do with everything I just told you? Well, if, according to Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 8, it said those who are truly spiritual can discern all things and can learn. Romans 8, 5 through 8 says, Those who are truly spiritual can learn all things and can do all things and can discern those things that are spiritual. It also is written, it says that the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to Yah and doesn't submit to Yah's instructions. That's Romans chapter 8. Did you hear that? That mind that's set on carnal things cannot please the Most High and will not follow the uh, commandments of the Most High. He will not submit. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, it says that the Spirit is life because of righteousness. The Spirit is life because it is in according to the Most High's instructions. It will give to you Yah's righteousness. It will impute into your heart Yah's righteousness. So that's what we need to do. We need to focus on following the prescribed path as written in the Word. Not some man. Not some uh, doctrines and teachings of men. Not some uh, denomination. But what is really written. And I can't stress this enough before I go. The Bible is one book, one God, one teaching. The laws of the Most High have not changed as far as those that pertain to us. And I tell people all the time, if you want things to have function in your life, to walk according to the Most High, follow the Ten Commandments. And the Most High will impute into your heart, your spirit, and confirm with your spirit those things that apply to you and your life. Well, shalom and shalom and the Most High bless you and may His countenance shine upon you. Shalom.